my dudes what is up welcome to my tiny house and welcome to my channel my name is Stacy today's video is gonna be all about the impending winter I live in my tiny house in Ontario in Canada in a trailer park slash campground slash RV mobile home park so a lot of people have asked me what's the difference between living in a tiny house versus a trailer like a park model trailer home the biggest difference is the building code or the standard to which these two structures are built. What materials are used for the insulation, for the walls, the floor, the subfloor, the windows, and the biggest differentiating factor is how comfortable it's going to be during the winter. So I'm going to be talking about my heating sources, my water supply, how I keep that running during the winter so that it doesn't freeze, some changes that happen outside in the exterior of my house when the seasons change, and then anything that changes inside of my home. So I hope to answer a lot of the questions that you guys have been asking me on Instagram, on YouTube. If you have any more questions, please leave them in a comment on this video and I will try to answer them in an upcoming video. Starting with the heat, I will tell you from speaking to a lot of people at this particular mobile home park that do not live here during the winter, they will leave and live somewhere else because their trailer is too cold during the winter. But I've seen a few folks here kind of wrap their windows in some sort of plastic film. I'm not sure what the material is exactly, but a few different homes here uh, do that. I assume that's because they have air leaks in their windows. So they're getting some sort of cold air kind of draft coming in from the windows or their heat is escaping out of the windows, which makes it less efficient to heat up the home. A lot of times because our home is not on a permanent foundation, whether that's a trailer or a tiny home on wheels or not on wheels, we have some sort of temporary foundation we have a skirting around the outside and there's some amount of ventilation that is happening underneath that skirting. I actually have a whole video dedicated to that topic. So if you want to learn a little bit more, please check out that video. And because of that, the floors tend to be the coldest spot in the house. So I <laughs> have heated floors. And it's amazing. It might seem a little over the top, but it's actually a very efficient way to heat a home. As I hope you know, hot air rises. So if you localize the heat to be radiating from the spot that's going to be the coldest in your house and then allow it to passively rise, that's gonna be the most efficient way to heat as opposed to blasting hot air from, uh, for example, like a ductless mini split that might be up near the ceiling and then you have to have some sort of way to drive that heat down to the floor where you're spending most of your time in your home. It was much more of an upfront cost than a ductless mini split, for example, or some electric heaters that I would have to plug in all over the home. But because of that, it takes up basically no space whatsoever. And it's so comfortable. And again, because it's so efficient, it saves a lot of money on my electrical bill. All right, so this is my utility closet located in my bathroom. The pipes here are connected to the propane tanks outside, which are connected to this unit. So this is my combination boiler. It powers the hot water as well as the radiant in-floor heating. So my in-floor heating does not use like glycol. It just uses regular running water. I will say if you're going to get a unit like this, you should be setting up annual maintenance because some things will break just like any other appliance. You really want to check things out <laughs> and make sure that it's working because I did have one time last year where this stopped working and then I needed to wait three days for them to come and fix it. So I was basically, using like a electric heater that I had to plug in. So it might be good for you to have a backup heat source because even if you can maybe move somewhere else while it's broken, it might also affect other things in your home like the plumbing. You wanna make sure those things don't freeze. Hey guys, so I was 
literally after filming today, I was just watching a YouTube video from another tiny house dweller talking about her forced air furnace. It's like really noisy and kind of disrupts her sleep. I want to see if I can try to have you guys listen to the sound that it makes. It's like a little click. That was it. And then... makes that noise <laughs> so the sound is so minimal it has never bothered me it's something I literally didn't even consider until watching Adelina's video so in case you're wondering so one thing I'll do during the winter is change the direction of the ceiling fan so that it sucks the hot air up instead of pushing cool air down and then one other huge benefit of this home and particularly the dark exterior siding is it almost acts like a solar panel to really heat up the home but vice versa during the summer it can get really hot in here so outside of my home i have a kind of pergola structure i put a shade cloth up during the summer this year which was awesome it actually did a great job of keeping the home a little bit cooler i purposefully designed that shade cloth so that it could easily be removed by using some grommet holes with bungee straps connected to little hooks on the ends of each pergola. So that allows me to kind of switch between winter mode and summer mode in a way that's very cost effective, very easy to maintain. The spray foam, again, wasn't my first choice because it's a lot more expensive and arguably not the most environmentally friendly, but it's actually great for mobile homes because when it dries up, it becomes very rigid, which actually helps firm up the structure of the home. So if you're going to be moving it again, it will help the home from being a little less flexible than it would if you were using like traditional fiberglass insulation. My water source does come from the park, so I'm hooked up to the park's municipal water it is wrapped in heat tape, which is then wrapped in an extra layer of insulation. That heat tape will turn on when the ambient temperature is below zero. So I have had my water freeze a couple of times. And the reason why that was happening is because I did not have properly ventilated skirting. Again, check out that other video. I'll also leave a link in the description. So that sensor is underneath my house, and before I had vented panels in my skirting, if it was four degrees underneath my house and zero degrees outside of the house, the heat tape wouldn't turn on, and then my water supply would freeze. Since I have vented the skirting, I have not had frozen water issues again, but you definitely need heat tape in a cold environment. So now as far as my car parking situation, I do not have a garage, obviously, tiny house. I don't have any form of shelter for where my car is parked, so it is really exposed to the elements. So I definitely have to shovel not only the path in front of my car, but also my car itself is <laughs> usually covered in snow. My neighbor on this side, has a kind of tent-like structure over their car, which I think is a really great idea. I do not have a lot that's big enough to kind of have a designated car parking area off to the side like they have over there. My car is immediately in front of my house. So I could fit one of those tents, but it would really obstruct my beautiful view out the window. So it's either I could <laughs> sacrifice the view or I could sacrifice the convenience of being able to just shovel a little patch in front of my car, get in the car and go. So the park here does maintain the main paths or roads. Obviously I put winter tires on my car. I start doing that at the beginning of November, even if it doesn't snow yet. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I don't use any salt or sand or any other stuff like that. I just shovel the snow and then that's it. I will put away all of my patio furniture. It's just a few chairs. I'll fold them up and kind of tuck them in the corner. Any of my ceramic pots that are on my shelf, I will also put those away in a storage bin because I found that ceramic 
if it gets exposed to snow accumulation and then the thawing of snow, they start to crack and it kind of, they can break sometimes. So I like to just store those and put those away. I dismantled my garden in like October, basically when the first frost came in, all of my vegetable plants died. And then my favorite part of the winter, I get to put out the bird feeder. So I only put out my bird feeder in the winter. So I have like a regular bird feeder that the chickadees or the nuthatches will use. And then I have a suet block. And that block is specifically for woodpeckers because I noticed that woodpeckers just kind of bash their head <laughs> and they basically just displace all of the seeds. So everything just kind of falls on the ground and then certain ground feeders like dark eyed juncos or blue jays, they'll all kind of gather <laughs> underneath the bird feeder. So you do have to be careful. Please make sure that you have stickers on your windows if your bird feeder is close to the house so that birds don't ram into your windows and uh, get themselves injured. As an avid birder myself, it's something that really brings me joy in the morning when I'm making my coffee or washing dishes to just watch the birds do their things outside the window. It's one of my favorite things that I look forward to during the winter. All right, so this is my wardrobe unit. This was custom built by my partner and I. I do have another video on my channel about how we put the cane on the doors, so you can check that out if you're interested. But custom built furniture is really, I think, the only way to go in a tiny house to make use of every inch of space <laughs> that you have available. Another thing, you know, adjusting to the winter, it gets really dark really early, so by 4 p.m. it's pretty much nighttime. And I found it was kind of hard to see in the wardrobe without these puck lights that I've installed on the top here. So you can push them on or off so that I can actually see what's going on in here. So I do have another closet at my mother-in-law's house where I have more clothes stored. So I will swap things out as it gets colder. So right now I'm pretty much in full winter mode <laughs> except for my parka. Yeah, that's how my clothing storage kind of changes throughout the seasons. So that concludes today's video, guys. I hope that answered a lot of your questions. I know winter's not most people's favorite time of year. It can get a little gloomy, it can get a little depressing. I actually have a bottle of vitamin D on my desk so that I don't forget <laughs> to take my supplements during the winter. If you live in a climate where you're deprived of sunlight, <laughs> For a good majority of the year it can definitely affect your mood i found that just decorating my home with like really bright colors and having cute lighting sources kind of helps just bring a more joyful vibe to an otherwise kind of gloomy time of year but my perspective on winter has definitely changed a lot since i've moved here i have a reverence or a respect for the strength of mother nature during the winter. And I'm also trying to kind of take cues from the natural cycles, especially of mammals that live around here who hibernate during the winter. It's kind of a time to accept that we might be a little less energetic, just get cozy, drink some more hot tea, read some more books, cuddle with someone that you love under a blanket the seasonal fruits and vegetables that are available. I love pomegranates and I can only get them this time of year. So that's another thing that I always look forward to. I would love to hear from you guys. What do you look forward to during the winter? Let's try to lift each other's um, seasonal depression. <laughs> if you found any information in this video valuable and you have someone in mind that would also find this information valuable, please share it with them. I would sincerely appreciate it. That's all for now, folks. Take it easy.